Hey guys, how you doing? Remy Slover here. Today I'm actually with my buddy Aaron. And today I'm going to have Aaron demonstrate the bird dog exercise to you guys. So the bird dog exercise is a specific exercise that will strengthen the core specifically or stabilize the muscles. So now if you guys know my last video where I talked about all the different core muscles and how they're important in stabilizing the spine and allowing us to bear more weight as well as improving performance. So now I'm going to have Aaron demonstrate the bird dog exercise. So all I'm going to have him do is get down on all four points. So he's on his hands here and his knees. So his hands are going to be placed under his shoulders and his knees under his hips. So we want his knees and his feet placed hip width apart. So he's in a good position here. Feet are dorsi flexed. We want to maintain a good neutral spine. So right now he's in a good neutral position as well as with the neck. From this position now, all he's going to do is he's going to extend his hip and his arm here, his shoulder, at the same time. So Aaron, I'm going to have you extend your shoulder and hip while maintaining a neutral uh, spine. So he's engaging his shoulder flexion here as well as hip extension. So as we see here, we have a little bit of uh, extension occurring more than we'd like to, so he's deviating from the neutral spine. So with the, now Aaron, just come back. Now I want him to extend out, and slowly extend out. So I only want him to extend, wait, come extend a little bit further. So only about to this position because as, as, as he keeps extending out, what ends up happening is back is going into excessive extension, which we don't want. So this is basically a sign that his core muscles are slightly weak. So, now Aaron, you can, that's good. So now there was a study that was conducted and it was published in the Journal of Kinesiology. And what they found in the study was that with the, they looked specifically at the bird dog exercise and they looked at trunk activation. So they looked at specifically the muscles of the erector spinae, rectus abdominis, and the internal and external oblique muscles. So what they found that, so Aaron, I'm going to have Aaron extend, do one more repetition, so he's going to extend outwards. What they found that when, he, when the individual extended their arm out, they were in maximum activation of the right internal oblique muscle. So their internal oblique was working really hard to extend and hold that position when the arm was out as well as the left external oblique on this side, when he extended his hip out, it was getting maximal activation, so it was working the hardest. Now, looking at this from a practical point of view, so Aaron, that's good. If an individual had a weak internal oblique muscle or external oblique muscle, like you know in my previous videos, I talked about how the core muscles are specifically important in stabilizing the spine. So if an individual had that a weak muscle, they could basically incorporate the bird dog exercise into their program and they could strengthen those specific muscles. Because we know that with weak core muscles comes an increase in uh, risk of injury as well as a potential decrease in performance. Because we know that our internal and external weak muscles, they allow the trunk to rotate. So if you look at it like a sport like hockey, when you're basically taking a shot, you're using those trunk muscles to rotate and if those muscles were weak, the spine could de slightly deviate when it shouldn't and we can generate less force. Okay, so now one way to make this exercise more challenging is that I'm gonna have Aaron get back into the same position. And all I'm gonna have him do here now is he's gonna extend his shoulder and hip out again. And from this point, he's basically gonna just draw imaginary squares. So he's gonna slowly draw imaginary squares. And this is basically gonna create more activation within the trunk. It's gonna challenge him a little bit more, making this exercise a little bit more difficult. So all of the motion is basically coming from the hip here and the shoulder. We don't want any motion coming from the back. So Aaron, that's good. So, and then the third and last way to make this exercise a little bit more challenging, specifically this is an exercise that's geared towards athletes or anyone that trains very athletically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a resistance band here. So we have a resistance band here. You could use a uh, cable machine with a handle like at the gym. And what Aaron's going to do here is I'm just going to have him place his foot into the handle. So go ahead and place your foot in there. Yeah. And from this position now, he's just going to extend the hip out and his shoulder out like the original exercise. So Aaron, go ahead and extend out. So what this is allowing now is that we're getting some glute activation from the band. We're getting more glute activation because now we have the resistance from the band. As well as the external oblique is going to be firing a lot more. It's going to be challenged a lot more in order to basically stabilize the spine and maintain a neutral position. So I'm going to come back now. So perform one more repetition. So now we perform one more. 
So I'll keep that neutral spine. Good. So this is one way, guys, a great exercise. Anyone looking for a, uh, to challenge themselves a little bit more. So now you guys may ask, how can I incorporate this into my workout program? So guys, this is an exercise that I love to incorporate in the, be in the beginning of my workout, specifically right after my warm-up or as a superset exercise. The reason being is because with this exercise, we're getting a lot of trunk activation, so we're warming up all those core muscles as well as we're getting hip mobility from extending our hip out, and we're also getting glute activation, specifically when performing the exercise with the resistance band. So this is a great exercise to perform before doing like a heavy squat or heavy deadlift, because we know with heavy squats, heavy deadlifts comes, we need a lot of, we need, we need our core muscles activated, we need, and also there's also, we, have, we need glute activation, so our glutes need to be active, and as well as our hips need to be warmed up, so we get that good hip mobility. So guys, there you have it. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, uh, give this a thumbs up, give it a like, and also subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys.